Hi, my name is Morris Coates and I own a company called SEMA Limited who produce electronic variable speed equipment for the dairy industry, namely variable speed milk, water, vacuum and effluent pump controllers. Um, recently I've had some difficulty with stray voltage tests, specifically a type of test that's performed with an oscilloscope and the test is supposed to measure the voltage that's present between the screen on a VSD cable at the drive end and the screen at the motor end. I've had two units that have failed this test and I'm really struggling to, to understand the technicalities involved as um, the, the results just make no sense to me. I know it's not a generic fault with my product because other units out there have, have, have passed this test um, very well. So um, I've spent a lot of money and I'm about to spend a great deal of time getting to the bottom of exactly what is going on with this test. Um, I've purchased an oscilloscope which is this, exactly the same make and model as, as the um, testers out there are using to perform this test. It's a Chinese oscilloscope. It's absolutely spectacularly good value for money. It's um, well, it, it's around about a thousand dollar oscilloscope, and, and typically for one that's got this fe these features, you would expect to pay five to six times that amount, and you would still consider it cheap. So it's it's very very good value for money. Uh, it's a mains powered oscilloscope and uh, that can actually be quite undesirable um, because the earth on the main supply is carried right through to uh, the test clip on the oscilloscope and is also present on all of the test plugs and on the chassis of the machine and that can give undesirable results when testing and um, the official legal approved method of making a mains powered oscilloscope earth free is to use an isolating transformer. However, the ones that are being used to perform this test out in the field just have the earth pin cut off the plug. Um, I've duplicated this, although I haven't cut the earth pin off the plug. I've actually interrupted the earth wire and I've put a switch in there so that I can turn the earth connection on or off. Um, for those not familiar with an oscilloscope, um, an oscilloscope measures voltage. This is the oscilloscope probe and all that an oscilloscope does is measure how much voltage is present between this clip and this probe. That's it. But there's nothing really complex or special about an oscilloscope. That's all it does. The difference between this and say a voltage meter or a multimeter is the oscilloscope plots a continuous graph of, of the voltage that it sees across these um, probes and time. And we can adjust the voltage scale and the time scale with, with, with these knobs. Um, the oscilloscope can also react very quickly to changes in voltage. Um, this is a, a, a 100 megahertz oscilloscope, so basically it can measure waveforms that um, that have a hundred million cycles per second. Okay, so that's about it. I'm, I'm going to do be doing a whole load of tests with this and I will be producing a full written report. Um, but I thought it was a good idea to do this video blog alongside the report just so that there is 
visual evidence of the tests that I've performed and, and exactly um, how I'm doing it. Um, I accidentally leaned on the on-off button and turned the oscilloscope off, um, but we don't need it at the moment anyway. So, I'm going to start, oh, sorry, before I begin, um, Peter Jews of Peter Jews Limited, who is a stray voltage consultant, has been very, very helpful in providing me with all the settings that they use in these oscilloscopes, and I've gone through and I've programmed this one to have exactly the same settings in there as the stray voltage testers out in the field are using. So I'm going to start by just doing some bench tests with this oscilloscope just so we can see how it behaves and, and, and learn what effect the programming that's been put in here has. So I'll turn off the camera now and I'll zoom in on the oscilloscope Back and again. go ahead and run some um, bench tests. Okay, so we're zoomed in on the oscilloscope and it's got exactly the same programming in it as all the ones out in the field have got. And uh, I guess we'll start by just having a bit of a play with it and, and, and seeing what happens. So I'll touch the end of the scope probe like so. Now that's absolutely extraordinary. Um, th this is a, an area where we assemble and test variable speed drives but we have nothing powered up at the moment, no variable speed drivers running. Um, the o in fact, the only thing that's turned on here at the moment are the lights. And you can see the whole screen has just absolutely filled up. What, what I'll do is adjust the scale. Um, at the moment we're on one volt per division. So that would be about 8 volts at, on full scale. So I'll just increase that. Oh goodness. Okay, I'm on, on the unit's maximum scaling, which is 10 volts per division. <laughs> So according to this, I've got 80 volts present on my finger. <laughs> I, I would not expect to be feeling this well if, if I had 80 volts on my finger. Um, so that, that's just absolutely bizarre. And in fact, with nothing on the scope, I'm still getting 10 volts. Okay, so that that's an absolutely bizarre result, and I don't pretend, to, I don't begin to understand it. Um, I'm going to try touching both the probe and the clip now. Oh. Okay, well according to this, I've got 30 volts across those two fingers. You would think that I would be in quite intense pain with that, wouldn't you? Um, but this is, what, what I'm going to, the only thing we've got powered up in here are the lights. I'm actually going to try turning the ones off above this bench and we'll see if that has any effect. <laughs> if anything, it's worse. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to trivialise this, but this this is just bizarre. I might as well turn those lights back on. This, okay, well, I've got to put that in the basket of things that I don't understand. So, um, just as a quick test, I have my good old faithful battery-powered oscilloscope here that I've had for many, many years. 
it's only a 10 megahertz oscilloscope but the frequency that, that we see on the screen of this one is, is quite low anyway so the 10 megahertz one will be fine um, I'll turn that on and I don't think this is going to show up very well on camera so you might just have to take my word for the readings that that I get on it and what I'm going to do is go across those same two fingers again and what I'm showing here is uh, 0 0.01 of a volt so something is very 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 wrong um, this meter which I trust implicitly which I use on an almost daily basis is measuring 0 0.01 of a volt and this one is showing um, oh, I must have sorry I must have bumped some buttons while I was um, while I was doing this, I'll just have to figure out which button I bumped. And unbump it. Oh, it's getting worse. Okay, I'll have to pause the video and go back and reset the scope. And um, I'll uh, continue a bit later. Hi back again and the scopes all reset um, and still giving the same result across my two fingers there it goes okay so what I'm going to do now is set about trying to find out what exactly it is that's, that's causing it to record that voltage so the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my switch that's connected in series with the earth wire. So I'll earth the scope and I'm turning it on now. Didn't appear to affect the residual voltage display on the scope, but let's see what the two finger test gives us. Oh, well that's substantially different. Okay, let me try the one finger test. Okay, well we've still got a bit there, but way less than we had before. Okay, so earthing the scope definitely affects the reading. Um, I'll have to do some more thinking about that to work out how. Um, for now though, I'll disconnect that earth again because we only want to alter one thing at a time. No, yeah, and we're back to, to how we were before. And what I'm going to do is disable the maths functions. Now, this, this is quite bizarre. I, I can't work out why this is as it is, but maths functions are enabled and what the scope has been told to do in its settings is to add the readings from channel 1 to channel 2 and we're not even using channel 2 there is no um, lead plugged into it so why you would want to use that is another thing that I'll have to put in the don't know basket but Right now, as an experiment, I'm turning off the maths functions. Well, that looks a whole lot better. We've lost all our residual voltage, which shouldn't have been there in the first place. Let me try the single finger test. Okay, well, we've still got something there, but it's much less. It's um, 10 volts now. Okay, and if I do the two finger, that's much better. That's exactly what you should see, and and I would say that 
this scope now agrees with my good old faithful. So it's for some reason it's it's the maths functions which have exaggerated the amount of voltage that's that's present on on this particular input. I would have to know a lot more about the construction and programming of the scope before I could hazard a guess as to why that should be, but I see no justification for having maths functions enabled when we've only got one scope lead in. The maths functions all apply a mathematical formula between the two inputs. So if you've got two inputs connected, two probes connected, you can subtract one from the other, you can add them together, which is, was the case um, with this, it was set to add the two of them together. You can multiply them, you can divide them, etc, etc, etc. If you're only using one probe, there is no justification for having that maths function turned on. Okay, I think that we might have solved our issue. Okay, so I've pretty much finished what I can do on the bench here. Um, the next stage is to perform the actual test as it's performed out in the field. I'll start off by performing that test here on a, on a, a small sample motor. Depending on the results that I get from that, I'll then go out onto a farm and try the test again under actual working conditions with one of my controllers that was sent back to me because it failed the test. So that's it for this, um, this segment. Um, keep watching for the, for the next uh, episode to be posted. Thanks. Bye.